Hello friends and welcome to my channel and those who are new hello we are going to paint a autumn landscape today it should be a uh, very quite easy for beginners um, we are going to begin by using a size 12 round brush and just trying to get it pretty wet we're going to begin with this guy and we are going to use a wet on wet technique and i'm going to take some ultramarine blue And I am going to take some Cad Red. And I am using the Windsor and Newton Cotman um, watercolor. It's a great beginner watercolor. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of Cad Yellow because I want to neutralize this a bit more because I want to make the I want it to be a grayish purple. Well, for getting the mountain color ready. And then I want to use some ultramarine. Oops. Wrong color. Just wipe that up. It don't have to be perfect. And... Ooh, almost did it again. I must really want <laughs> Phaleo Blue. Okay, Ultramarine. Let's do some Sky. And then I'm just going to add a touch. Just a little bit of Cad Red. And put it in there. Okay. And I'm going to wet this guy first. I'm only using one jar of water, so I might have to change it halfway through. But for right now, and I am using the fluid watercolor paper. It is not 100% cotton, but it's a very nice beginner watercolor paper. I don't mind it at all. Um, I don't like putting tape on it. It's not the best for that. However, this is on a block and it'll be fine. So we're going to begin by wetting the sky. I'm going to give it a moment or so to soak in and I don't want it to be super wet. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some of this ultramarine to the sky but I want to leave out a little bit for some clouds I want it and as it gets closer to the mountains I want it to fade darker on top and then down over the mountain and then if you want um you can take a little bit more of this uh cad red and add it to that blue to give it a little purple and then add a very little touch of cad yellow to try to neutralize it a little bit more and we can add a little bit of grays little to the bottom of these clouds perhaps but this way we have a little variation in the sky 
And what I like about this as paper is you can kind of work at it. Um, I like the effects it gives for the skies. There. Now we're going to leave it alone. I think that will be pretty nice. Now we're going to let that dry. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and I want to do the first layer of the water. So <clears throat> for the river, I'm just going to go ahead and water, um, wet it, but I don't want it to be soaked. I'm going to go ahead and use a smaller brush at this point in time. And I am using a size 8 round now. So I'm going to take some of the ultramarine blue once again. And I'm going to add a touch of the cad yellow or uh, cad red, sorry, wrong color, too much. Dab some of it off if you get too much. Because we just kind of... What we did to the sky, we want to also do in the water. So I'm going to finish wetting this. Not minding the rocks right now. Because we'll put those in in a little bit. Right now, I just want to get the water. I'm trying to hurry because you don't want it to dry, really. Okay, now I'm going to try to smooth some of this water out. Get this bit. Because we don't really want a hard edge in the water. Okay, got us wet. Now we're going to add the blue. Kind of leaving out a little bit for the other colors, not to mention there are clouds in the sky. So I just want to add the first layer because we will be adding more layers of color. That is the wonderful effect of translucent watercolor. Paper's starting to dry up already. Okay, so what I'm going to do is kind of wet it and then I want to try to blend it in a little bit because it's just the first layer. We're going to be adding more color anyway. So just trying to do that, but I want to add just little hints of water of color okay now we can let that dry now we're gonna now that the sky and the river is dry we're gonna go ahead and move on to the mountains and for the mountains we want a grayish color so we are going to go ahead and we're going to take some, once again, some ultramarine blue and we are going to take some cad red and get it like a purplish color because we want the mountains a little purplish, 
like a purplish gray. Now, to gray that off, we're going to go ahead and add just a touch of the cad yellow. And that just grayed it down. So, for the first set of mountains, we're going to do that first. So, I think we should probably wet it first. Sorry if I'm quiet, I'm just concentrating. But now that is what we're going to go ahead and we are going to add our gray mixture. And we're going to put it on the top and we're just going to bring it down. Holding the brush on the side. We're going to make sure I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit of water around because I kind of want it to bleed a little tiny bit into the background. I want to blur it out. Not doing a whole lot to it, just wanted to blend it out. Okay, and leave it alone. And we're going to want that to dry. Because it's going to want to look like it's in the distance. Okay, now once again, we're going to mix up some more of our mixture. This time I want it a little darker. So we're going to add a little bit more ultramarine. Once again, some cad red. Make our purplish color. And then we're going to add just a touch of our cad yellow once again. And this time our mix is darker. Because we're going to do this front mountain. And it's going to make the other side of mountains look like they're pushed back. And that's what we want. And this time we didn't really do the one on what. I wanted... To do it more... Of a one on dry. One thing is watercolor is similar and to color pencil in regards to it's you a lot of people more so I know I do I like working in the layers Okay, now we got that. 
Now what I'm going to do a little bit to add just a touch more, I'm going to go ahead and clean my brush. And I'm going to put it on the side because I want to add a little bit of a highlight. And I'm just going to take it down and down on the side of the mountain. And then just take it. I want it to lift off a little bit of that color to add just a touch of a highlights. And then add a little bit they'll make it look like it's receding but it's going to add a little bit more dimension and then what we're going to do is once again we're going to dry blow dry it okay now is where we're going to start adding a little bit of color we're going to want to do the background trees. Now, when we do these, we're going to do a mixture of colors because it's fall. It's autumn. We want quite a bit. So we're going to go ahead and take some of our cat yellow. We're going to take some of our cad red. And we're going to put that over here. And then we're going to take a little cad red. And we're going to mix it with some of the cali yellow. And we're going to get a nice orange. And then we're going to go ahead and add a little orange to it because we want nice and bright and vibrant. And then we're going to go ahead and take a little bit of burnt sienna. A little bit of Indian red. This is where we're going to add a little bit more colors. And I think some yellow ochre. We're going to go ahead and grab some yellow ochre as well. Go ahead and we're going to put that there. There we go. Now, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to start adding our colors. I want to start adding some of the yellows. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of dab it on. And then we're going to take some of this burnt sienna and we're going to go ahead and add that in there because we got another big tree here. And on that side of that tree, I think we're going to go into some Yeah, there we go. And we're going to take some of the yellow ochre. And I'm using a thicker consistency and what we're going to do is we're going to mix these colors. We're just going to go in and we're going to add these colors. Going to make it kind of thick. Because when we're done, I'm going to show you a a trick with the card that's right the things you can do go ahead and I want to add some of this Indian red I love Indian red for for fall and just kind of dabbing it going 
different shapes and sizes let's throw a little green in there i'm gonna throw some sap green yeah because it's fall and during the fall there's all kinds of colors and we definitely we want a mixture add some orange You definitely want different shapes and sizes because after all we want it to look like a forest. It don't have to be perfect. However, taking some of that cad red beautiful very nice taking and some behind because you know we got layers and as many colors as you can get because this is going to look pretty sweet when it's done I want to add another like a pine down here another pine in here Yeah, add some more Indian red or not yeah, Indian red, which I really love. Now I'm trying to fill in some of the space. We want to add a little bit more colors because we want some layers maybe a few bushes up down here all right so then we're going to take a card and we're going to scrape because we want to add some some of the trunks to the trees if we can it's a delicacy on the paper 
sometimes it has to be just the right wetness for you to us to get it but that's okay because these are in the distance we're not going to see these a whole lot so that's what it's looking like so far now Well, that really made those mountains look far, didn't it? So, we're going to go ahead and take some of this sap green. And I want to take some of that yellow ochre. And what I'm going to do is I want to layer the grass. But I want to put so we're gonna go and go ahead and wet it Very nice. Okay, we're going to go ahead and start with this side and we're going to take start taking our sap green. And we're going to add add our green for the grass. Now, it don't have to be perfect, and I'm going to go ahead and add some of the yellow ochre and taking it through because what we're basically trying to do is we want to add and establish some just a base layer because there will be quite a bit on top of this. But we want that base layer down. Because we are definitely going to add quite a few more coats. Okay. Perfect. There's that side. And once again, I just want to add some of the other colors. We just dab that on. Why not? Throw some on the other side as well. And let it dry. And we're going to come on this side. And we're going to take some sap green now. And we're going to go ahead and just same thing. And I want the ground to look like it's a little muddy well not muddy but drying up I don't want it because this time of year it's not all green and pretty so we want the browns and stuff to show through take a little bit more cat red mix it all up that's the good thing about dirty dirty in your palette it uh, palette a little because you want to add some of those colors okay and add a little bit more green there we go. And we're going to let that dry. Picture's coming along, isn't it? 
it'll get even better yet guys so now we're gonna go ahead and add our foreground trees and I like to use a fan brush for my pines I think it makes it pretty easy to do and I just kind of work it and I'm using pretty thick paint now at this point in time because we want it thick and it's gonna cover some of the trees in the background but that's what we kind of want it's all about the layers and I'm holding it up Is this will look really slick and then we're, we're done with the trees we are going to work on the water some more and we'll do more to that but in the meantime okay there's the first tree and then so then what we're going to do because I want the pines over here and then over here will be a different type and then and you'll be able to see the other trees peeking out through the background We got two trees there. And I think we need another tree up front. Kind of like through here. A little baby tree. Okay, very nice. So we got the trees over here of the pines. So over here, I want to do something a little different because we don't want pines on both. So over here, I'm going to go ahead we're going to do some bigger trees now. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take some browns. Because we want a trunk. It's kind of going to go up. I'm going to have these little branches. Because and it don't have to be perfect because we're going to go ahead and I will show you a, another easy technique. There we go. There's one tree. And then let's go ahead and 
I'm going to add another smaller tree through here. And no worries, we're going to add some stuff to the bottom. Okay. And then let's add one more tree in the back. Okay, perfect. And then now what I find is an easier way to do this is I like to sponge. So we're going to begin with our lighter colors. So we're going to start with some yellow. And we're going to add just, just a pair of highlights on this side just to add a little bit of color okay so I like to take some we're gonna begin with some yellow and we're just sponging it on And then let's add some orange to this tree. Very nice. Very lovely. And then I'm going to take some orange. And then now let's get some of the reds. And just lightly, because what we're, we want a mixture of colors is basically what it's coming to. We just, we want the colors. Now, what I like to also do is add some to the ground because there's leaves just here and there. And let's add some yellows or oranges oops too much but that's okay because we can make it work and then we want to add some yellow because we want it to look like leaves that have fallen okay so now that we got that, we're going to go ahead and add some more greens. Because we need some grasses. Okay. 
So we're just going to go ahead and a little bit of grasses through here. And then I'm going to come back through and I'm going to add a little bit more greens with the colors. It's just going to add a little bit more interest. And this way too, it'll make our leaves and stuff kind of blend in. Because we want it to the effect to look like leaves that have fallen. This is a kind of abstract painting, but we want it to be somewhat though <laughs> believable. We want our minds to take us there. So I'm just kind of dropping in the green to blend in with the leaves. Sorry. <coughs> Got a tickle in the throat. <coughs> okay. So finish this up. <coughs> Sorry, a tickle in the throat. Oh boy. This, like I said, is just trying to blend these colors through. We kind of wanted to look like leaves have fallen. And then for the trees, I'm just going to add a little darker colors in there because we want it to look like a little bit like bark. So I get my head out of the way. Yes, this is going to look really lovely when it's done. Okay, so now it's time to work on the water some more. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is I want to add a little bit more blues. So we're going to take some of that ultramarine. And we're just going to add because we wanted to I like it some waves because we're going to go ahead and add reflection in here. As well. So then we're going to take some of that green. Get some of this green color. Mix it up. And we're going to drop some of that green in the water. Very nice. And 
trying to blend this water out, add in more blues. Don't have to be perfect because we're going to be adding some rocks. Don't forget, we got to add some rocks. But trying to blend it out because we want the greens over here. But we're going to have some of the reds and oranges and stuff over here. So we'll take a little bit of the orange. We're going to blend it out because we, we don't want like an in your face, you know, with it. And then some of the cad reds. Kind of water it down. A little bit more ready. Because basically we're trying to capture the... We want to capture the... The reflection of it and all. From the trees. And we're take a little bit more orange. And some more reds and stuff. Basically the colors we used. There we go. Very nice. So we're going to add a little bit more ripples to the water. And we're doing like a dry brush. And even across what we did gently though, because you're not, we're not trying to, we don't want to smear it, but we want to add a little bit of the blues. We want movement to the water. Because we want it to look like water. We're getting there, guys. Okay. Now. I would say now at this point in time, I'm going to add a little bit of brown. I want to add that to like the riverbank in certain places. makes such a nice difference don't it that just to add that just a hair to the bank 
Now, I'm going to add the rocks. So for the rocks, we're going to take a little bit of the ultramarine. Whoa. And we're going to go ahead and take some burnt sienna. And we're going to get like a grayish and maybe some cat orange there. So we got some browns, just kind of a mixture. And then we're going to go ahead and do some rocks. And a big one here. We want quite a bit of rocks because this is a rocky river base. And we're going to put some smaller ones in the back to show some distance but we wanted this to be a I want it to be a rocky riverbed there's quite a bit of rocks and then a few back here maybe just a hair peeking through maybe perhaps just tiny little things Now, trying to add some features to these rocks because we don't want them to be plain. Now, we can kind of scratch because, you know, some rocks have scratches in them okay we want to put a little bit of shade on the bottom so they don't look like they're just kind of floating. And you can kind of do that with a kind of like a wet brush and just take it in underneath. I don't think it's looking too bad. And we got our finished fall picture, guys. It's pretty easy to do. So thank you I hope you liked it um if you liked it please like and subscribe to the channel and I will look forward to painting another painting with you guys thanks and have a great day bye